Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another exciting, titillating edition of Radical Rock and Record Reviews with me, your host, Wild Ride bassist, Mick Watkins, otherwise known as Dick Twatkins. And today, guys, I'm coming with you, I'm coming at you with a an unboxing video that I've been waiting a week to do. I've been waiting a week to do. It's been a week since I've had this album. And, you know, I was really wanting to let this album sink in. I was really wanting to soak the songs in, get everything in really good, and make sure that when I talk about this, unbox it, review it, that I came at it with a pretty good sense of, uh, of feeling and how I feel about this album and just my overall thoughts with it. So, it came out last week, today, a week ago, it came out, and I got my ass in my car, drove down to Target, which Target honestly has become a hot spot for me and buying music lately. Like coming out with like new albums and, and music and stuff. Like Target's becoming really, like in my area, it's becoming the hot spot, which is kind of crazy because Target's always been, like music wise, a very kind of trendy place, you know? And they've stepped their game up as far as CDs and vinyl a lot. And I commend them. Thank you, Target. You are currently kicking all kinds of ass. But anyway, guys, nonetheless, the album that I want to talk about today is an album that, as far as this year, 2020, this was probably one of my most anticipated. You know, because, uh, well, this is an artist that I've loved for a long time. I mean, probably probably most of my life, honestly, you know. And this artist is, other, is none other we're talking about Marilyn Manson and his brand new album that came out a week ago. We're talking about We Are Chaos right here, guys. This album, picked it up on CD. But this isn't what I'm going to unbox today, no. I've been waiting a week. I've been holding off on opening this just for you all. So like me and you can hang out, enjoy our time together, talk about some cool-ass music. But no. Today we're going to unbox and I'm going to talk about the Target exclusive of Marilyn Manson's new album, We Are Chaos, on vinyl. I got like a little bit of glare from the window of my house, but check it out. Here's the cool ass album cover. This album cover is a painting that Manson did himself. Almost looks like a watercolor maybe painting, but it's called Infinite Darkness. There is a song on this album called Infinite Darkness also, uh, but yeah. I mean, I believe that this is Manson's 11th studio album. And, you know, this is his very first album with Shooter Jennings because the last two albums, um, 2015's Pell Emperor and then 2017's Heaven Upside Down, he was working with film score guy, a guy that does lots of film score for movies and stuff, Tyler Bates, and talking about those last two albums. Uh, 2015's Pell Emperor, I honestly thought was after a few, you know, during the mid 2000s, uh, Manson's music to me kind of took a downward spiral, really, honestly, you know, and uh, I was not really that fond out of all of them. Like, you have, I mean, to me, honestly, Manson's downfall kind of started really in 2003 with the golden age of grotesque and that album back when it came out was not a big fan of it after the trilogy of antichrist superstar and mechanical animals in hollywood which those albums are fucking amazing some of the best rock albums of all time honestly but coming after the release of those i mean i have a feeling that it wouldn't matter what what um he would have done it still would have been a disappointment but anyway, starting with Golden Age, my interest in Manson started to wane. And then you come out in 2007 with Eat Me, Drink Me, which is which is a good album. Good album, but uh, still not that great. Then in 2009, thankfully, he got back with Tweety Ramirez, Jordy White, and released an excellent album. Excellent album. One of my, 
I'm a personal favorites, honestly, called The High End of Low. And that album just, I think it's fucking awesome. Honestly, I would put it right up there with Portrait of American Family, Antichrist Superstar, Mechanical Animals, Hollywood. I would rank it that 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 high up. Then he uh, went back downhill again for Born Villain, which I'm not really that crazy about. Born Villain came out in 2012. That album did not do anything for me. So then 2015 rolls around, and then you get Manson hooks up with Tyler Bates and releases the amazing classic Hell Emperor. And that was the album that brought me back into the Manson fold and the Manson fandom after some years of definitely waning. So yeah, Pell Emperor kicked ass, great. Then the album after that, 2017's, um, was Heaven Upside Down. That album with Tyler Bates, once again, it came out and I mean, it's good, but for some reason it did not really grab me too much. I mean, it's got a handful of really strong kick-ass tracks, but other than that, it didn't really do that much for me. So that brings us to present day, guys. 2020 and the release of We Are Chaos. And I'm telling you what, this album right here, Weird Chaos, went out and got it last Friday at Target. Bought the vinyl and the CD, popped the CD into my stereo in my car, sat there, drove around, listened to it, it played through once and I have to say that honestly I was not impressed I was not impressed I was like this album's kind of boring all the songs kind of sound the same none of the songs have hooks I was just not really impressed but you know for me I don't judge things on a first listen you know then I played it again Two times. Started getting better. Then I listened to it three times. Four times. And I'll tell you what, this album started to click. This album clicked majorly. And I think within the last week, I think I've listened to it eight or nine times. And honestly, no shit. This album was a total grower for me. But honestly, I can totally say without a shadow of a doubt, this album right here, we, we are chaos. This album is absolutely one of Marilyn Manson's best albums, and I consider it a total masterpiece. No shit, no shit. I love it, I just, I love the feel of it. It's got a very, uh, this album's got a very, very kinda 80s, new wave-ish, gothy vibe about it. You know, this album, um, you can hear lots of, of uh, Manson's influences in this. Lots of influences. This album is probably, I'd say probably next to Mechanical Animals, this is Manson's most Bowie-esque. Lots of David Bowie influence with this album. Lots of kind of uh, late 70s, early 80s David Bowie. Like, let's say, like some of the songs kind of have... Uh, a little bit of the style of the uh, Low album, Low and Heroes. Then some of it's got kind of the vibe of some of his early album, early 80s albums, excuse me, like let's say uh, Scary Monsters and Let's Dance. Seriously, very Bowie-esque album. And then there's even hints of kind of more goth rock stuff, kind of like The Cure, you know, it's very moody and uh, Kind of bro, like kind of brooding, like the Cures music, you know. And then once again, that you know, being said with the Bowie esque songs and the Cure influence, I also like Mechanical Animals. Hear a lot of kind of glam influence and a lot of the hooks of the songs. I mean, the songs at first I didn't really hear any hooks, but man, after listen, after listen. The hooks on this album are so fucking strong and just, dude, they get stuck in your head. The choruses on this album are so strong. There's hooks in the verses, the guitar riffs, 
just very hook oriented and I can hear lots of kind of glam influence, you know, kind of like that T-Rex, T-Rex Mark Bolin kind of influence. Even some, I know this might sound a little crazy to some, but I think even like some early kind of glammy Elton John kind of influences are in this. Lots of piano are in We Are Chaos, and I love it, man. I mean, it kicks off track number one, Red, Black, and Blue. That's kind of the most uh, stereotypical Manson style song, I think. It's very industrial sounding very heavy, harsh, kind of distorted vocals. But then once you get past Red, Black, and Blue, the album takes on a different, uh, takes on a different kind of course, you know? I mean, next you got track number two, We, we Are Chaos. And that's very kind of a ballad-esque, almost like a love song that is very fitting for these times we're going through right now with the coronavirus and everything else. But 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 very, excuse me, but very Beatlesque, Beatlesque style music, very Beatlesque style uh, lyrics, you know, very Lennon-esque, probably more John Lennon style Beatles. Track three, one of my favorite songs in the album, maybe my favorite song on the album, very early 80s, late 70s, David Bowie influence. Don't Chase the Dead. Don't Chase the Dead, honestly, one of, one of the best songs that Manson's ever written. And I'm telling you what, this team up with him and Shooter Jennings, whenever I first heard of him and Shooter Jennings getting together, I thought this was kind of going to be like Manson's uh, goth country album, you know? And I really thought that because based on Shooter Jennings, well, yeah, he's the son of Waylon Jennings. I thought this was gonna be kind of like a goth, gothy kind of glam country album. It's nothing like this, dude. Nothing like this. But Shooter Jennings and Marilyn Manson teaming up together, writing these songs. Fucking awesome. No shit. Some of Ma Manson's best work ever. I mean, I can I can just gush over this album all day long, honestly. Very good release. Then you go into track number four. Another kind of ballad, almost like I said, an Elton John-esque, little David Bowie-esque, Paint You With My Love. First reading that title, I thought it was kind of going to be a real kind of sleazy, nasty rocker. Because painting somebody with your love, what do you think about it? I don't know, my uh, mind is probably in the gutter. Paint You With My Love sounds kind of nasty. Sounds kind of gross. But it's not. It's not a... It's not a sleazy hard rocker. Actually, that's the song playing in the background. And it's a very kind of just sweet, soft ballad with great hooks. I love it. Another great song, Halfway and One Step Forward. Infinite Darkness kind of kicks it a little back up to the more stereotypical industrial kind of distorted Manson style. Perfume is a great song. Track number eight. Probably my favorite song on this whole album. Another masterpiece, right up there with Don't Chase, Chase the Dead. Keep My Head Together. Dude, if that's not a David Bowie, T-Rex, glam rock, mechanical animals, stomping ass track, then I don't know what it is. Track number nine. I'm gonna probably fuck this title up. Solve Coagula, great song, awesome song. And then, the, and then the record ends with track number 10, Broken Needle, which I think is pretty cool because the lyrics, he kind of compares maybe like the breakup, like the end of a relationship, a breakup to the whole, uh, you know, playing the record, you know, you're going to scratch my grooves with your broken needle. I thought that was pretty cool. I thought that was really neat lyrics. So yeah, guys, this album right here, Marilyn Manson, We Are Chaos. Excellent album, and definitely, no shit, definitely album of the year contender for me, from yours truly, Mick Watkins, Wild Ride Bassist, otherwise known as Dick Watkins.
No doubt about it. Album of the year contender for 2020. Right here. Love this album. Honestly, one of Manson's best. And you can trust my word, because I'm a longtime fan of Manson. Should I have been into Manson since I was 10 or 11 years old back in 95, 96. And I've followed Manson pretty much since then. Except for, you know, a couple little dips in there in the mid 2000s, where he kind of lost me a little bit. But nonetheless, great album. So let's, let's bust this bitch open. What do you think? Like I've stated on past videos, one of the best ways to open up a vinyl record is to use a guitar pick. Use a guitar pick. I'm a green Fender Heavies. Yes, I, yes, I am a bass player and I use a pick. You got a problem with that? Huh? You got a problem with that? I don't think so. so. Here you go, guys. Unboxing. I've waited a week. Champagne problems. I don't want to know. I don't need to know. You got champagne problems. I love that part. Man, this is track number five. Halfway in one step forward. Tomorrow. Excellent. So anyway, you take your guitar pick. Down the slit. Remember, you got to penetrate the slit. First, you got to rub the slit. Oh, yeah. You got to rub the slit. Get it ready. Then you take your pick and you penetrate that slit. Ooh, look, very easy open, look. Don't want to damage the insides or anything. That's what she said. Look at that, there you go, take it down the side. That was a perfect opening. So yeah, like I said, I've been like waiting a week to experience this with you, my friends, here on YouTube on Radical Rockin' Record Reviews. So let's bust open Marilyn Manson, We Are Chaos. And if you see the hype sticker, it's a Target exclusive, limited edition, and Translucent black ice vinyl. So let's check it out. Let's bust it open. Take take the shrink wrap off. You know, I like to take the shrink wrap off. I mean, I know there's some vinyl fans that like to keep the shrink wrap on their records, and that's not really my style. So here it is, nice glossy, cool. See, there's the glare from the window. It's not as bad. I love this album cover. Probably probably one of Manson's coolest album cover. Here's the back, with cool song titles, and that's the new album symbol, because, ooh, and the symbol, if you feel it, yeah, the symbol's kind of embossed, that's cool. Wonder if the lettering, on no, it's just the symbol's embossed, but like each one of Manson's albums has its own symbol and kind of own theme, you know, which I've always loved, I think it's pretty cool. So anyway, guys, blah, 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 let's bust open Marilyn Manson, We Are Chaos, a great album. If you're a fan of Marilyn Manson, if you're a fan of David Bowie, pick this album up, dude. You won't be disappointed. No shit, it's probably the best album David Bowie never wrote. No doubt about it. And like I've said a million times, I'm sorry to keep repeating myself, guys, but I'm gushing. Oh, oh I'm gushing all over. One of Marilyn Manson's best albums. I don't know. So let's check it out. Oh, check this out. It also comes with a limited edition art print. This is pretty cool. Some more of Manson's artwork. Check it out. It's kind of spooky. Look at that. It's kind of pretty cool. Pretty cool. I dig that. Sweet. And I think like each vinyl um, release has a different print in it. They're just kind of glowing the cool black light. Check it out. Check it out. Check it out. Check it out. Check it out, dude. That's pretty neat. Neat shit. I like when bands, you know, put posters in their stuff, you know, and stickers, you know, being a, being a huge Kiss Geek, you know, you get a little spoiled on stuff like that. So thank you, Manson, for including something fun, something cool to collect, something cool to maybe hang up, an awesome art print. I dig it. So now let's uh, see what else we got in there. Ooh, oh, another page out of the Kiss book, which growing up, uh, Manson was a huge Kiss fan. It's got a fucking poster, dude. It's got a cool poster, and it also comes with the lyrics. So let's check it out. You got like a full-size poster. I don't know what the dimensions of this would be, honestly. But yeah, look at There's all the lyrics. There's the album symbol. Pretty cool, pretty cool. And on the back, this was featured in the CD version, but not as cool as this. Another art print. Check out another 
spooky ass looking face. Looks really cool in the black light. Check that out, man. I'll have to put this in a frame and hang it up here in the music cave. Check that shit out, dude. Look at that. Man, that's pretty cool, dude. You know, see, and I don't want to harp on you, but you know what? You don't get this stuff. You don't get this cool stuff when you stream music off Spotify and all that crap. Which I don't know how you all know how I feel about streaming. Not a fan. I think it's boring as hell. But you don't get cool stuff like this from streaming. Look at that. Awesome cool stuff. But nonetheless, if you like to stream your music, I'm not judging. I stream while I'm at work. It's convenience at work. Better than carrying around a CD player in my back pocket like it's fucking 1998. So anyway, now we're going to bust it open. Or Is there any more fun kind of little surprises in that? No? But I do love the way this jacket smells. It smells great. So here you go. Here is the slate that the vinyl is in, the record. Again, there's the new album symbol. Cool looking kind of watercolor cloud looking stuff. I thought that was like some bats flying around, but it's not. Then you turn the album over and it has the album credits. You know, the album was produced by Shooter Jennings and Marilyn Manson, um, recorded at The Coil in Hollywood, California, California. And the artwork, Marilyn Manson, cover painting, is called Infinite Darkness. Inside painting is called, the one that's the poster, that's called The Never Ending Astral Vampire. That's a cool fucking title. And the layout design was done by Christopher Lickie. All songs are written and performed by Marilyn Manson and Shooter Jennings, with Juan Alderit on bass, Jamie Douglas on drums, Ted Russell Camp on bass, more bass, Brandon Pertzborn on drums, Audrey Richmond fiddle, John Schreffer-Liller on guitar, pedal steel guitar, Paul Wiley guitar, Mark Raines recording engineer, blah, 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 blah. Lots of credits, cool stuff. You know, one of the things that I miss about Manson's music is while this is great, and I really like how he teams up with um, different writers on different albums, but you know what I really miss as a longtime Manson fan? I really miss him having a core band, you know. I really miss the lineup of like Twiggy Ramirez on bass, John Five guitar, you know, uh, Madonna Wayne Gacy on keyboards, um, Ginger Fish on drums. To me, that was the best Manson band. Actually, no, it wasn't. I mean, the Portrait of American Family lineup with Daisy Berkowitz. And Gidget Gein on bass, Sarah Lee Lucas on drums, and Madonna Wayne Gacy on keyboards. But anyway, I just miss Manson having more of a star-studded band. But dude, the band on this album delivered and is better than half of Manson's discography, honestly. So I'm going to shut up. And let's check out this uh, black or blue, I think it's called black ice colored vinyl. Here you go. Let's look at this together. I've been waiting a week to show you. So check it out. I'm going to pull it out slowly. That's what she said. There you go. I have not seen this. Wow, that's cool. I dig that. Wow. Okay. So wait. Let's check it out real closely. Look at that. Kind of. Look at that. That's really cool. I like that. That's a pretty color. I, I don't know if the camera kind of shows it off as good as what it what I see in person. Check that out. Yeah, that's cool. You know, I think this is refreshing because a lot of vinyl nowadays is kind of splattered or swirls and stuff, which I love. I love some colored vinyl. I love splattered vinyl of the swirl. I just love cool. But you know what? To get a colored unique vinyl that's just a flat color i really like that too i think that's cool as hell but yeah check that out guys kind of a black i think it's called black ice target exclusive so yeah so guys there it is the unboxing we did it the unboxing of marilyn manson's weird chaos the brand new album came out a week ago and 
yeah, pick this, pick it up. This is a great album. Like I've said probably 15 fucking times in this video, one of Manson's best releases. No doubt about it, you know, and only truly, only time will tell how I really feel about it, you know. Do I think it's as good as the earlier stuff? Let's say Antichrist Superstar, Mechanical Animals, Hollywood, Portrait of American Family. You know, that's that's got a lot to go up against. There's a lot of nostalgia with those records for me. I mean, that was like my teenage years. You know, lots of cool, good times had with those albums. But you know what? I can definitely say that this album. Getting past that, that early period from Portrait to Hollywood, I could definitely say that this album very well might be, very well might be his best album since Hollywood. No shit. But I don't want to dwell too much into that because eventually, one of these days, probably here soon after this album sinks in a little bit more, I'm going to do a ranking review, an album of ranking of Marilyn Manson's discography. So I don't want to let the cat out of the bag too much. But yeah, guys, I'm going to shut up and get off here. I want to do a quick video. Pick this album up, dude. Excellent release, Marilyn Manson. Definitely contender for album of the year for me. And it very well might be the best rock album. Rock, metal, just not really a metal album, but throwing it into the category. This might be album of the year for me. We'll see. We got three more months of music to come out. So guys, peace. Thanks for rocking with me. See you guys on the next one, which might come later today. See ya.